Now, when I started out in filmmaking and cinematography, one of the ideas I was sold is that if I wanna get cinematic looking footage, I'm gonna have to slow things down using frame rates and get slow motion footage. And on some level, those people were right. Slow motion footage looks pretty great but you have to be able to use frame rates and slow motion footage effectively in your videos in order to tell better stories and have better, more cinematic looking videos. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about frame rates. Some of the things that I use as guiding principles when I use different frame rates and why there's one I kind of just don't use anymore. Now in the early stages, one of the concepts you learn about is a 180 degree shutter rule, which basically means that your shutter speed is gonna be set to one over two times the frame rate you're gonna be using. Now, generally speaking, a lot of people film in 24 frames a second which means that your shutter speed is going to be 1 over 48 or if your camera can't do that 1 over 50th a second. Now when you're using variable frame rates in 60 and 120 frames a second that rule is no different. In 60 frames you're going to use 1 over 120th or 1 over 125 and in 120 frames a second you're going to use 1 over 240 or 1 over 250. But what ends up happening when we kind of neglect the rules and we start to do things a little bit differently. Now if I'm using slow motion footage but I'm using faster shutter speeds what's going to end up happening is you're going to have a lack of motion blur. Now in 24 frames a second, that just means things might look a little bit jittier and frantic, but in slow motion, it looks a little bit off. With a lack of motion blur, it's harder to sell the slow motion effect. What ends up happening is that without that motion blur, things are in slow motion, but it doesn't look like that because the motion blur isn't really selling that effect to you. If you're gonna use things that are a little bit slower, you're gonna use slower shutter speeds while using slow motion, you're gonna have a ton of motion blur. Now this might be cool for a dream sequence or something that's supposed to look a little more airy, but if you use this improperly, what ends up happening is it looks like you just did things wrong. And in fact, it kind of looks like you filmed everything on April the 20th last year. If you know, you know. Now that we've chosen to obey the rules or not obey the rules, what does each frame rate say about your videos? Starting that, a lot of the advice that I got was using your 60 frames or 120 frames a second as a catch all for capturing B-roll but I decided to create a little bit of a cheat sheet whenever I wanted to decide to use slow motion footage or just keep things at 24 frames a second. Now at 24 frames a second, what you're saying is I'm here, I'm present and I'm in the moment. 24 frames is pretty close to what we're gonna see with our human eye in real time. And if you want your viewer to feel like they're in the story as it's happening, using 24 frames a second for dialogue scenes or even some B-roll shots is a great way to make sure that things are moving along on a pace and things aren't stretched out too much because you just wanna get from point A to point B. Now 60 frames a second is used as my way to make normal human actions seem a little bit more emphasized and a little bit more important. In my situation, for example, I do a lot of fitness content. Now starting out 60 frames a second is a great way to let your viewer know that this thing is important or you have to pay attention to this, whether it be something that's a really cool trick, a really cool fitness move, or you just want your viewer to know that whatever the person is doing at that current point in time is incredibly important. Now, before we talk about 120 frames a second, the frame rate that was sold to everybody, a lot of cameras nowadays are actually going past that with things like 180 frames a second or 240 frames a second. Now I use a Sony FX6 and it could do 240 frames a second in HD. Now, I actually don't know why I would use this. I don't have a use for it, but if you guys do use 240 frames a second often, leave a comment down below because honestly, I'm genuinely curious. Now we're gonna talk about 120 frames a second. And I've had kind of a complicated relationship with this frame rate because when I was watching my favorite creators, I was watching my favorite YouTubers, everybody and their mother was shooting at 120 frames a second for cinematic B-roll. Now for me personally, when I'm watching 120 frames a second footage, because it was five times slower, I felt like I was being told that whatever I'm watching at this very moment is of the utmost importance, or it's a very fast non-human moving object. Things that are moving incredibly fast so that you need to slow down and make sure that we see it, that was reserved for 120 frames a second. So my rule for using the five times slow motion feature is to tell my viewer that you really need to see this or you really need to see this action as it happens or it's a really effective way to help hold onto the shot so you can add things like voiceover or other important information that you need your viewer to see. Now here are three guiding principles that I use when I'm shooting slow motion footage in general. If it's wide and it's slow, it just is no go. And basically what that means is when I'm getting establishing or wide shots, if there's no motion in the frame, there's nothing moving, then there kind of isn't a point. I'm gonna put two clips on the screen at 60 and 24 frames a second. And as you can see, they kind of look the same, which means that using slow motion where there's nothing moving in the frame kind of doesn't work that well, 
Not only does it not sell the effect, but it pretty much looks like you didn't do anything to begin with. Now that brings me to point number two, where if there's nothing moving in the frame, then the camera should. Now it's great to be able to use handheld camera movements or gimbal or dolly movements while using high frame rates, and that's used as a means to add more dynamicism and to actually enhance the shot that you have especially if you have subjects or objects that aren't actually moving. Now what I will say is if you wanna make things that much better, add movement in your subject or your object, but also with your camera as well. When you use the conjunction of the two, which actually works really well, especially for getting things like fitness cinematography or sports or anything like that, it makes things look that much better and that much more dynamic and cinematic. And number three, and the last thing I'm gonna say is that if you're going to overuse 120 frames a second, your soul is going to go along with it. Now that might seem a little bit harsh, but 120 frames a second was used as a catch-all for cinematic footage. Now starting out in the earlier years, I followed that same rule where every video I had had overuse of 120 frames a second, and after a while it kind of got old and I started to outgrow it. The reason being is that slow motion footage in general, particularly 120 frames a second, it's meant as a ways of making things look important in your films. But if you've overused that setting and you've made everything seem like it's really, really important, then by comparison, actually nothing is. And that's why I started to grow out of 120 frames a second. That five times slow motion, using it back to back to back, not only slows down the pacing of your film, but sometimes it slows it down so much that the viewer checks out and doesn't want to see the rest of it because you get sick and tired of watching slow motion footage for the next five minutes. With great power comes great responsibility, and with using frame rates, especially the high quality slow motion features that are in a lot of these new cameras, you have to keep those things in mind, not as a foundation of your cinematography and filmmaking, but as a way to put icing on the cake and to make your videos and your films look that much better. Now again, these are just my guiding principles, this is just my opinion, and kind of my thoughts about using high frame rate footage. You guys might do things a little bit differently, and I'm sure you'll leave a comment down below as to how exactly you do that. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.